We're coming to you this morning from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. I'm Radio Pastor Ernie Sanders, and uh, you're listening to us on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's the 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa, in Ocala. The title of the message this morning is The Husband is the Head of the Wife. The Husband is the Head of the Wife. Now we got a long, a roundabout way of getting to this message today. On, on Friday night's radio program, if you folks were listening, uh, Matt Lynch was reading from his New Age Bible version, uh, which which caused a little bit of a problem. And uh, and so, you know, I I'm a stickler of have the Word of God meaning what it says. So uh, this was the. Uh, only version of the Bible that he had <coughs> since his conversion. He's, he's had the Bible for a very long time, so it means a lot to him because it was all like mine falling apart because it's been used a lot. And his wife gave it to him when he was converted from Catholicism. Uh, but I had to, to correct him. Colossians 1.14 and Philippians 2.6 and Luke 2.33 and uh, where it refers to well, in Colossians 1.14, referred to the blood. You know, they, they just took took the blood right out of uh, that version. And then Philippians 2.6 says exactly the opposite of what the Bible says. Okay, uh, They said that Jesus thought it would be robbery to be equal with God. And, and the, the Bible says just exactly the opposite, that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Right. You know, obviously because he is. And then, of course, in Luke 2.33, refers to... Uh, their version refers to Joseph as the father of Jesus, so we know that God was the father of Jesus. So, and then during the commercial breaks, I, I had to give him some other instructions. I'm gonna, he's going to be here tomorrow night, Lord's plan. I'm going to give him a real Bible. Okay? All right. And so, but anyhow, uh, here, people started calling in after that and, and uh, promoting the King James Bible, you know, one after the other. And, Anyhow, I said all that to say this, that there are people that will say, I don't like what your Bible teaches, so I've got my own that teaches what I want to believe. And people do that today out there. Uh, today, the, the feminists uh, and the homosexuals have their own versions or perversions of the Bible. Now, I was thinking about that, you know, maybe there's something to that. You see, if I was to... When I went to the military, we had a military uh, code of justice manual, and uh, it was it was pretty strict. But, but I was thinking if we could make up my own manual, and and so you know to sell them for ten bucks a piece to these guys that are just going into the service. That way, you know when they get called on the road, they just say, "Well, I have my own manual here." <laughs> and well, then you got the same thing with the prison regulations manual. We go down to the prisons; they got their manuals and everything posted there, but we can make up our own, and then that way, in fact, I was thinking of maybe, well, we could take one of the inmates home with us every time we visit, <laughs> but in our manual, and then, uh, of course, now, uh, 17,000 pages of the IRS tax code, I could put on a postcard, yeah. and since it would be very simple, you know, my, my tax code would be very simple, okay, and that is, we don't owe you anything. You know? So it would be only $2, because it wouldn't cost me a whole lot. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you think that if we did that, it would work? No? What if, what if you don't agree with things? I mean, they don't agree with the Bible. It's like, uh, you know, what if you don't agree with the... We mentioned that this morning we were talking about that. Some people think that fire shouldn't burn. So, I mean, if you just decide fire should not burn, you think that would work? No? What about the law of gravity? I don't think that was a good law. I don't think it was ever passed by Congress. So, what if we decided, hey, you know, this law of gravity's got to go? Do you think that would work? Nope. Who wants to test it? So, See, now, you know, you say, well, that's, that's all foolishness, you know, that's, well, that's liberalism. This is the, what they call politically correct mindset that is prevalent in the society we live in today. And we're going to start today uh, in Luke chapter 11, here. 
And in Luke chapter 11, starting in verse 14. And he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass that when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casts out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, saw him. It was a sign from heaven that he knowing the, but he, knowing their thoughts, said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against the house fall. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. And when a strong man armed keepeth his place, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he shall take from him all the armor wherein he trusted and divided the spoil. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth. And when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He said that I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man was worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps that gave that thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Now, here the whole point is division, divide. The, the opposition, the enemy out there, uh, wants to divide and conquer. We're going to take a look at that. And... He wants to, to divide every uh, divine institution, starting with marriage and a family. Mm -hmm. And boy, the world's been very good at that. And uh, people have been buying it. Unfortunately, those who are professing Christians don't really, really, either they really don't know the Word of God or they don't hold to the Word of God. And that's why divorce is so rampant in our country today. Mm -hmm. That's why people put their children in public schools out there yeah. today. They either don't know the Word of God or they don't believe it. Now, Beelzebub came from the word Baal-zebul. Baal-zebul, meaning uh, the Lord Baal. Now, the Hebrews changed it, uh, being sarcastically, to Beelzebub, meaning the Lord of the Flies. So what they said, what the Philistines had called their Lord, their God, they said, your God is the God of Flies. Hmm. And that was not a compliment. Yeah. Now, here, there's a couple of, of uh, verses in this passage of Scripture that are confusing to some people. Jesus said, But if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, uh, they shall be your judges. And what he was saying is, look, I just cast out the devil. What are you guys? So, see, they couldn't cast out devils. And that's what he was pointing. He says, by who? He was being sarcastic. Who do your sons cast out devils? meaning he's talking to the Pharisees, meaning their religious leaders. And guess what? They weren't casting out any devils. You know why? Because they didn't have the power of God, and the Lord Jesus had made it very clear. You don't know me because you don't know my Father. Amen. Because you're not of my Father, but of your Father, the devil. So, and then another passage that has a lot of people confused is... Uh, when he says, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places and seeking rest and finding none. He said, I will return to my house once I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth his swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. And what he's talking about is this, that uh, when you had the devils cast out, the devil cast out, unless that house becomes occupied by the Holy Ghost, and this is your house that he's referring to, your body, unless you become occupied by the Holy Ghost, guess who's coming back? Mm -hmm. You see, that's what happened today in our society, when they expel God from the public school system. Right. 
the door was left open, guess who showed up? And that, that's happened in everything. I mean, uh, since abomination, this man of great, great sin has come along. He's done that in the military. We've seen it in the white MCA, the white WCA. We've seen it recently with the Girl Scouts a long time ago and the Boy Scouts recently. You know, every so many different organizations. But if, if you want to know where this whole idea of sodomite marriage, what, what promoted it, of course we know it came from the gates of hell, but what promoted it is the public school system. That's where they were working on it, just like everything else, the, the Antichrist system, the cultural Marxism. And so here the idea is to divide and conquer. A house divided cannot stand. And that's the idea with, with the, the marriage and the family. This is why you have so so many marriages end in divorce today. They don't really understand. They don't they don't understand that God is the same today, tomorrow, forever. Amen. And what he meant about marriage, what he said he meant. And in fact, the uh, second shortest verse in the whole Bible is God hates divorce. God hates divorce. You see, when you know that God hates divorce, guess what? You shouldn't get a divorce. Right? And he gives you some very, very narrow reasons why you can get a divorce. Well, I want you to turn over now to Isaiah chapter 44, because you see, uh, one of the things that, uh, if I was the devil, the best tool I could possibly have would be if people didn't think I existed. So you see, so like, did you ever watch that movie about the invisible man where nobody can see him? And he comes in and he walks right you know, into places nobody can see him there. And if, if, if people didn't believe you existed, well, you could get away with all kinds of mischief. And that's exactly what the, the devil uses, the lamestream media and everything else out there, uh, to promote that he doesn't exist. Revolution. I got a real charge out of Ted Cruz and Rubio during that debate. When uh, especially, I mean, Cruz just leveled uh, those buzzards called the mainstream media. Uh, but Rubio, when they were talking about super PACs, Rubio come out and he hit the truth. He says, Hillary has a super PAC. It's called the mainstream media. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, the hypocrisy were up in their faces. They just, he just nailed those. If you didn't see that debate, you really missed the best one I've seen in years. No doubt. And here now, if you go over to Isaiah chapter 14, the goal of Satan is to destroy mankind. Is to destroy mankind. Remember, Satan sat in the throne room of God. And so he was privy to all of what was going to be in the future. And all of a sudden, he finds out, guess what? God is making these puny beings called human beings. And guess what? These human beings will be judging angels... And guess what Satan was? And they'll be in charge of us. All of that takes place during the Millennial Kingdom, right? Now think about that. Here's, here's someone that with the extreme intellect, uh, the, the smartest, the, the most beautiful creature ever made, the most powerful creature God ever created. And all of a sudden he finds out that you and I are going to be judging him. And guess what crept in? Uh, it was a thing called pride okay, and iniquity. Uh, Satan decided, no, I want a different Bible. I don't, I don't want to live by these rules. And then he decided, well, he, he was going to do a couple things. He was going to destroy mankind, and he was going to rise to the position to be equal with God. I don't think he'll make it. Well, let's go to Isaiah 14, starting in verse 12. Now the first 11 verses he's talking about an antichrist, an antichrist who thought he was God, okay, and, uh, but now he's going and starting in verse 12 with where he's getting his power, he's getting his power from Satan himself, and this is Satan we're dealing with. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. Now the stars are the angels of heaven. 
And I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. That's the third heaven. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's us. The clouds are the saints. And I will be like the most high. But then the Lord corrects him here. See. He says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? Well, he has caused a lot of trouble in this world, hasn't he? Yeah. Amen. So, if you turn over to Ephesians 6, you see how some of the ways that Satan plans on doing these wonderful things. In Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10, we read this. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Remember, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, here is Satan's devices, his strategies, his schemes, his tactics, uh, you know, all of these things he's using today, and he's using them in a, a mighty, mighty way today. Again, uh, if you've seen uh, just in the past eight years, there, it, it has increased uh, in intensity uh, to, to see what has happened uh, with, since abomination has been in. Uh, everywhere you turn, the, there is an antichrist Growing, growing Antichrist presence. In fact, uh, they were talking about uh, YouTube now is, is and as, are taking down all Christian sites when people have their uh, putting their, their DVDs up. YouTube said they're taking all anything that's got to do with Christian uh, off. Now, I just heard this morning wow. uh, Facebook has decided that they're going to start doing following and. Uh, so there's a, uh, a fellow that called me, and he's going to be making, uh, coming up with their own YouTube site. They're going to be putting their own together uh, for Christians. And then uh, they're going to make it very, very clear that, that they have very uh, clear specifications on who can put their, you know, anything that's anti-Christian, anything that's got uh, any kind of foul language or filth in it will not be allowed on their site. So you'll be hearing more about that as we go through. And then, if you go over uh, to Genesis 3, we see that Satan starts, that the strategy that start, Satan started with is to cause doubt. And remember, if, uh, if, if Satan can convince you that he doesn't exist, well, he can do anything he wants. He can get away with it. Which is happening to a large extent today. But in Genesis chapter uh, 3, verse 1. Now you've got to notice something here. You've seen this. Satan is going to be telling half truths with a little bit of truth in it. Yep. And that is very, very prevalent today. Yep. So many different ways you hear that. How many times have you heard uh, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely? Well, that's a half truth. Power does corrupt, but there's only one absolute power, and that's God. Amen. And God is not corrupt. Okay? So you have to be very clear and specific in what you say. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now remember, God spoke to Adam. God gave Adam these instructions, and Adam gave those instructions to Eve. Okay? Now here's what God said. He was, he was, she came out of him. Okay? Uh, he was her head. She was supposed to pay attention and listen. You see, she was supposed to listen to Adam. See, Adam was to listen to God. She was to listen to Adam. Amen. All right? And when that happened, things worked out well when it didn't happen. When men who were supposed to do what God told them, 
listen to their wives instead of God, we always had a problem. <laughs> Starting right here with Adam and Eve. And then when Abraham listened to Sarah, they ended up with Hagar. And since that's where you've got all the Arab nations out there, and, uh, you had uh, when Samson listened to Delilah, that cost him big time. Uh, and he knew better. Samson knew better. He didn't, he didn't do what he was supposed to do. Now Job was smart enough not to listen to his wife because she, she gave him some advice to, to curse God and just die. Okay? Uh, and uh, here, that would have been a tremendous, tremendous mistake. Well now here, uh, Adam should have listened uh, and obeyed God and not, and not listened to his wife. Uh, and the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. And they see, that was a half truth. Physically, she didn't die then. She died later. She would never. She wouldn't have. She would have lived forever. Okay? She would have lived forever. But when he said the other part, For God knoweth that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Another half truth. Their eyes were open. They knew good and evil, but they certainly weren't gods. Gods don't die, huh? Amen. That's right. Right? So. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Remember, what did Satan do here? Satan put doubt in. Satan put doubt in. And that's what they do. 24 hours a day, yep. you've got all of the media out there, you've got these history channels and all of these, trying to put some <coughs> doubt in. Is God really who God says he is, or is God an alien from Planet X? Okay. Yeah. And all of these things, you know, all of these movies, they all <coughs> try to put doubt, doubt in you. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they saw fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? I bet God knew where he was all along, huh? Yeah. 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 And, you know, you think Adam might have said, I'm not here, Lord. No. No. Today, they might teach you that in the public school says, I don't know. But anyhow, and the Lord, and, and he said, I heard the voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? <clears throat> Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman gave thou gavest to me with me. Why, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. You see, do you understand what he's saying? See, that, that woman you gave me? Yeah. You know, I was doing okay till you gave me that woman. See? And that's what caused me this problem here now. Remember, God gave Adam all of those critters and creatures to, to find a help me. You know? I mean, he, he was looking all through them. He had giraffes and hippopotamuses and duck dill platypuses. And, uh, he couldn't find anything that he, that he, he thought he could use. And now all of a sudden, God makes Eve. And uh, old Adam had never seen anything like that at all. And so, and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, Why well, was the servant to beguile me? You know, the devil made me do it. And I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the servant, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. And the dust shall not eat upon all the days of the life. You know, up to that time, the serpent wasn't crawling on his belly. He was walking around on two legs. Mm. And remember, Satan was the most beautiful creature <coughs> God ever, that God ever, ever created. So what did you have here? You had the most beautiful creature God ever created. Thought he was and you had the second most beautiful, and Eve, right there. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that's going to get her attention? Well, if you read over yep. to Ezekiel chapter 3, uh, the way Satan was closed. 
with diamonds and rubies and all of these precious stones, they would naturally get her attention. And, uh, and I will put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and I will bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise thy heel. Well, that's what you call a proto-evangel, proto-evangel, which means the first gospel. That was the prophecy of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, the, the division between God's children and the devil's children. And unto the woman he said, I will, I will multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow, and thou shalt bring forth children. And the desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Well, up until that time, childbirth was, was going to be painless. From what I understand nowadays, that's not the case. And so, and her desire will be to her husband. Well, at that time you had one man, one woman. You see, later on it came uh, to be the, the very nature of women, especially these young girls, uh, is they need approval. I mean, it's a part of their makeup. They need approval from a strong male figure. And guess who knows that better than anybody? The pimps. That's right. They know that better than anybody. But guess who else knows that? ISIS knows that. They know how to attract these women. Okay? Uh, thugs. You know, you know, the right thugs. But, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Did you hear that? Because you listen to your wife, mm -hmm. not me. So now you fellas, remember the next time your wife gets yelling at you, just say, you remember what, what it said there in Genesis? Right? Amen. Thou hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall they eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and also in thistles shall bring it unto thee, forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt, uh, thou shalt eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it was thou taken from dust, and thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Well now, here, you have to, up till that time, all Adam had it to do, he was the caretaker of the garden. He didn't have it to go out and do all of the planting and all of that. Okay? Uh, he had a pretty good job until this. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. <coughs> to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he be put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent them forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Well, Adam didn't want to get thrown out. He wanted to go back. Okay. And so here, what was the idea? Okay. The tactic that the enemy used was doubt, 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 doubt. And again, they're using that today. Did he really say that? Did he really mean that? And what about this possibility? Well, uh, turn over to Job chapter 4. In Job chapter 4, you've got the same thing. I, I read this actually last week with old elephants. And... Uh, now, old Eliphaz, uh, who, who was a friend of Job's, and again, like we said, with friends like him, we needed enemies. Yeah. Uh, he he thought he was a pretty smart fella. You see, he thought he uh, knew what was was going on, and he couldn't tell the difference when the devil was talking to him than when the God was. And it, you start in verse 12. Now, a thing was secretly brought to me, and my ears received a little thereof and thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on me. Fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all of my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face, and the hair of my flesh stood up. You know, it's an interesting thing, I think we, I told you before, Pastor Fed, you remember some years ago when we did that radio program there in that Louisville, or Louisville, or 
TV program. It was a television program. And we stopped before that.